All right, guys, so the stimulus package, the so-called America's Rescue Plan, has been passed again in the House. That's right, it's been passed again. This is the second time they voted on this, except this bill that they voted on uh, is uh, a little bit different from the first bill, uh, mainly that it is excluding uh, the $15 an hour minimum wage increase and it is kind of trimming uh, some of the fat off of the initial bill that was passed in the House, right? The GOP and the Senate, along with the so-called blue dog Democrats or the more conservative Democrats in the Senate, uh, stripped this bill of some of the pork that um, was in the first version of the House bill, right? And that mainly includes uh, limiting um, unemployment and limiting stimulus checks right to certain people now again some people may find that good some people may find that bad so this bill passed in the house uh 220 to 211 in which all republicans voted against it and just one democrat voted against it okay so it's going to be headed to joe biden's desk and and biden says that he's going to sign it on friday he's planning on signing it on friday and they have a deadline i think it's march 14th before um the unemployment benefits from the last stimulus check expires. So they want to get it signed before then. They wanted to get it passed uh, as soon as possible, okay? So in my prior videos on stimulus, obviously I've went over the provisions in the stimulus package. It hasn't really changed from the last time I've done it, but we'll go over some of the highlights again. Um, and because you guys have a question regarding prisoners getting stimulus checks, I will go over that as well. All right, so some of the bill's uh, major legislation pieces here. You have $300 a week in unemployment. Right. Um, it ex is extended until September 6. Uh, it makes uh, the individual's first ten thousand two hundred dollars of these benefits tax free. Right. That's basically the provision that Joe Manchin uh, settled on. Right. He compromised on that. You're also going to get fourteen hundred dollars stimulus checks. Now, the checks start to phase out if you make over seventy five thousand dollars a year and they are capped out if you make over eighty thousand. So if you make over eighty thousand dollars a year then you won't be receiving a stimulus checks. Now, the thresholds for joint filers is double this amount, okay? A lot of you guys have asked me about the stimulus checks and about, okay, are prisoners receiving the stimulus checks? And this is a big deal to some of you guys because Tom Cotton and other uh, Republican senators have come out and basically um, stated their beef with the stimulus package. And one of the beefs was the fact that prisoners are uh, going to be receiving checks. And the Republicans tried to uh, put in an amendment in the bill in the Senate in order to keep prisoners from receiving checks. So I'm going to let you guys hear the argument in the Senate uh, for leaving out prisoners uh, in regards to stimulus checks that the GOP presented. Um, I rise on behalf of myself, Senators Cotton and Cruz. Our amendment prevents $1,400 stimulus checks from going to inmates. You heard that right. This bill sends $1,400 stimulus checks to people incarcerated for heinous crimes. Prisoners have all their living and medical expenses paid for by the taxpayer. They don't pay taxes. They don't contribute to the tax base. They can't be unemployed. In other words, inmates are not economically impacted by COVID, and inmates cannot stimulate the economy. But under this bill, Democrats are giving prisoners, again, sometimes incarcerated for heinous crimes, a $1,400 stimulus check. If we eliminate, eliminate these, we save taxpayers $1.9 billion. Now, I know my Democratic colleagues aren't going to agree, but this spending should be on real needs. Stimulus checks for inmates is non-targeted, inappropriate. It is a total waste of money. I asked my colleagues to support the amendment. The GOP presented that argument there. Right. And a lot of you guys have asked me, are prisoners really receiving checks? The answer to that question is yes. Uh, prisoners are receiving stimulus checks. And I tend to agree with the Republicans and regard their argument. Right. Like the prisoners don't provide much economic return, positive economic return for uh, taxpayers. Right. For the government. Right. They're actually a strain on the system. And this bill is meant for COVID relief, right? It's, it's meant to provide relief and to stimulate the economy. I'm not sure if sending stimulus checks to prisoners is uh, going to help that. Now, you know, some people might say that's racist. There you go. The GOP, another example of them being racist because they're trying to keep black people from getting checks. That's how they started. That's how they frame this stuff. Uh, because, you know, th there's a lot of people that's incarcerated that are black. But here's the thing. Um, you know, I can't really rag on the democrats too much about this because the republicans let prisoners get checks in the first two bills 
right? So in the first initial CARES Act, remember, we had a Republican presidency, we had President Trump, and we had the Republican Senate, which was led by Mitch McConnell. And in both bills, they allow prisoners to get checks. Now, President Trump tried to keep prisoners from getting checks, right? He tried to do it through the IRS. However, uh, the courts rule that because the Republicans did not include language in the actual bill preventing uh, prisoners from getting checks, that the IRS could not uh, exclude prisoners from receiving stimulus checks. So basically it was defeated. Now, after that happened, that happened in October, the second package came up in December and the Republicans still did not add this provision to the bill. So for the Republicans to come out and to try to act like this is such a big deal now, you know, even though I do agree with that argument, I, I think it's just disingenuous. And, you know, it it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, you say you have this beef, but you had two times to get rid of it if you really felt like it was such a deal breaker. It's not that you really care that much. It just means that you're using it as political capital just to try to say things are wrong with the bill, right? When there's plenty of things that the Republicans can argue against in this bill, right? There's plenty of things, right? I think the inflation argument that the economy is already good argument, that the economy doesn't need more stimulus argument, and that the, that the relief should be more target, okay, because of inflation, I think that's a more honest and a better argument. I really do. So I really don't understand why Republicans are doing this. It, it kind of reminds me of the same thing where they try to go back and forth about Obamacare, right? The Republicans had an opportunity to overturn it if they wanted to, and they didn't do it. They didn't do it. And they failed to do this with legislation. And then they tried to get the Supreme Court to do it, and the Supreme Court was like, Y'all had an opportunity to do this with legislation. Why don't you do it? Right? So, you know, this is just one of those things where, where some of these guys are just using this as um, an attack against the Democrats. But it's not really an issue that they care about that much. Because they really cared. They had two times to leave this out of the bill. They had two times to put in an amendment that would exclude prisoners. But none of them did it. Even after uh, Trump tried to prevent prisoners from getting $1,400 stimulus checks, they still did not think to put that in there in the second stimulus check. So at this point, guys, it's like, it's neither here nor there for me. I agree with the Republican argument. I just think that they're being disingenuous about this. So uh, other provisions here, you have the uh, $3,600 uh, child tax credit, right? Uh, for children under six, $3,000 for kids uh, between six and 17. You have 20 billion for uh, the COVID-19 uh, vaccine manufacturing and distribution, along with $50 billion for texting and contract and contact tracing. You have $25 billion for rental and utility assistance and $10 billion for mortgage aid. Uh, $350 billion for relief to state, local, and uh, tribal governments. Uh, again, that was a beef that the Republicans had there, um, which, you know, again, I think they have some solid arguments in, in regards to that. Uh, 120 billion uh, to K through 12 schools. Republicans had beef with that. They had solid arguments on that as well, in regards to uh, schools not opening up. So why are we giving them all this money? We haven't even spent the money that uh, we allocated uh, for them during the last two stimulus packages. So again, why do we continue to keep giving them more money? Now, food stamps uh, is going up by 15 percent through September. The bill also includes uh, expansions of subsidies and other provisions uh, to help Americans afford health insurance. Uh, it's $30 billion in aid to restaurants. Uh, the legislation also expands the employee retention tax credit uh, designed to allow companies to keep uh, workers on payroll. All right. So, like I said, this passed um, in the House 220 to 211. One Democrat voted against it. Okay. All Republicans voted against it. And I'm very surprised to see that no progressives voted against this because the progressives did all this complaining about the stimulus package. Oh, how do you want the $15 hour minimum wage again? I, I don't want it. I'm, I'm glad they're, they're being weak on this, but I just want to harp on the progressives because they are pretty weak, right? It's pathetic how weak they are, right? For all that noise that they talk, for all the virtue signaling that they do in regards to social issues and economic issues, when it comes down to using their leverage, which they could have straight up denied this package, right? They could have straight up voted against it and prevented it from being passed and really would have had the upper hand on this. They would have had all the leverage because the Democrats wanted to get this done before unemployment runs out. And if they really wanted the minimum wage, right, if they really wanted 
not to cut the stimulus checks and the unemployment benefits, they could have fought for that, right? That's something they probably could have got done if they would have been like, no, we're not going to vote for this. This is not what we passed in the House. We're not going to vote for it. But that's not what they did. They folded. Once again, you had all the leverage in the world and they folded once again. But these people sit on Twitter and try to lecture people about this, that, and the other. They want to go back and forth with the establishment. And every time you look, they're letting the establishment roll all over them, right? I guess that's a good thing for conservatives. I, I just, you know, for me, from a political perspective, just watching this, like, just from a po political analyst perspective, it's just one of those things where it's just so funny. It's funny to me because these guys talk big game, but they're not willing to actually use whatever leverage they have. They want the Democrats to use all the power they have to fight for stuff that they want, but they don't want to use their power to fight for the stuff that they want because that's what they could have did, but they chose not to. They rather sit on Twitter and virtue signal and, you know, talk about racism and this, that, and the other, Right. But when it comes to the actual voting and the legislation, they go right along with the Democrats. They go right along with the establishment. Go right along with it. So, you know, it is what it is at this point. Um, I think the biggest question in regards to this package, in my opinion, is the inflation question. That's really what I'm watching. That's really what I'm worried about at this point. Uh, obviously, some people do need some relief. I, I do wish that um, this package would have been more targeted. Right. Uh, specifically, I wish that it would have been less uh, aid for schools. Uh, I wish that it would have been less aid for uh, local and state governments. I wish it would have been a little bit more targeted. Right. Um, towards those who really, really need it. But, you know, this is what we got. And um, like I said, we'll go from there. Now, again, guys, Biden is planning on doing another package, right? He's going to do another package that's focused on infrastructure. Some Democrats have already talked about doing more stimulus checks. They've talked about doing reoccurring stimulus checks. So this may or may not be the last stimulus check that we get. Who knows? But there definitely will be another package, and this will be up for debate again. So, you know, we'll see uh, moving forward here. Biden is supposed to sign this on Friday. But um, like I said, this this was the last kind of legislative um roadblock that was in the way of this act this thing actually going through so let me know what you guys think about this uh make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace